Hello, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part eight of Web Apps. And this video is the last video in the series, and it's going to talk about uh, user submitted web apps. So um, there's a couple uh, things you need to do before you can enable user submitted web apps, and that basically comes down uh, to going to your web app configuration and uh, defining the different uh, relevant fields and their settings, so whether or not customers can add items, delete items, and so forth, uh, as well as some of these options down here can have an effect on what happens when the web app is actually, or when the web app item is created. Um, there's several steps you have to go through. Um, when we talk about customer submitted items, we're talking about items that are submitted by customers who are members of your site. So they're going to have to be a user in your uh, CR CRM, and uh, you can get some details uh, from our CRM video series about those things. Um, you're going to need to create a page that's part of that secure zone um, so that only people who are logged in can access that page. You're going to need to include the web app item create form on that page, and you can optionally customize that as well as you can optionally add the payment fields to that if you're trying to create an item that requires payment before a user can submit the listing. Uh, you're going to want to set up a thank you page that the user will be sent to once they've successfully um, created a new item or submitted a new item. And you're going to need to define the autoresponder, which is an email that will be sent to the customer saying thank you for uh, submitting your item. I will let you know when it's been approved. And uh, then you'll want to set up your admin notification so the people who have access to your admin area of your site, uh, the, the site owner is basically going to be notified when new items are submitted so that if needed, they can go in and choose to approve the item or not. Um, and then finally in this video we're going to talk about uh, some of the things you have to do for getting the edit and delete parts of the user interface set up and uh, that will allow the customer who created the item to make changes to it as well as uh, delete it and uh, we'll talk about some of the things involved with that. So we're going to be creating a new web app uh, just to demonstrate how customer submitted web, web app items work. We're going to call it customer submitted. And uh, the most important settings for this are right here at the top for the customer permissions. And uh, basically you need to go through and check what you want your customers to be able to do. So adding new items, whether or not they can edit items, um, what can they delete items. And then in the case of editing items, um, it could be the case where you only want to allow the person who created that item to edit it. Alternatively, you may want to enable anyone uh, who has access to the secure zone to be able to edit the item, um, whether or not you want to specify the default expiration date. So you could create items um, that will have a default date. Uh, you're going to want to set whether or not the item requires approval and in many cases you're going to want to leave that checked which is the default and that means when a new item is submitted or an item gets updated uh, before those changes take effect and become uh, public uh, you'll uh, you'll basically have to approve those items and in that case you're going to want to set up a, a role which will get notified when that action happens and so uh, the member of this role uh, will receive an email and then they'll have to come into the site and choose to enable or not uh, for the item. Uh, finally, some other important settings that you're going to want to do is set the default template. There's a uh, there's no way for the customer to choose what uh, template their details page will use um, unless you select this. And whatever option you have selected here, that will be applied to any customer submitted web app items. That also affects the admin submitted items, just the defaults there. But it's particularly important for customer submitted items, uh, whether or not uh, you can you're going to allow for file uploads uh, for things like images. Uh, if you want, you'll need to select that so that they can actually upload an image from their computer. And you'll want to select what folder on the site those images will be uploaded to. Uh, admin users, when they're creating items in the back end, they can manually select a folder. But for end users, you'll need to select this so that all customer submitted images go to a specific folder. 
Finally, uh, if you want to require a payment before someone can submit an item, you'll want to check that payment required box and uh, that will allow you to collect a credit card payment. Uh, so think in the case of like a classified listings website. If uh, you want to charge say $5 uh, per listing, you can check that box and set up the form so that it will collect a $5 credit card payment. Uh, before someone will be able to submit it to submit an item and uh, so we'll go ahead and leave those options set and click save and that should create the web app and get us uh, and complete the first step for creating a customer submitted web app okay so we've created our web app that will allow us to submit items as a customer and we've also created a secure zone on the site and uh, you can get more details on how to do that by uh, watching our secure zone video but basically it just involves creating a secure zone and um, at that point you're going to want to create this page here which is going to uh, contain our ad form and the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure the item is secure so you go to more actions and then you select the secure zone that you want to place this uh, this into so we'll select the members only area and click publish and then we can close that out and now this page will require login before we can access it and the next thing you're going to want to do is put the ad form on the page itself so you can go to add modules to web page open up the web apps section and by using the uh, web app input form for customers uh, when you click on this and then click insert uh, you'll need to select the uh, the web app we're going to do so it's customer submitted and you'll see a preview of the default form you'll just place your cursor where you want that form and click insert and uh, that will place the default add item form on the page now uh, we didn't add any custom fields to this web app so we're only gonna have the option for name and description um, but if you had added custom fields to this web app, those would also be included on this ad form as well. So we'll hit update on there. And now when we try and visit our ad page, uh, because we're not logged in, it's going to redirect us to our uh, system page that allows us to log in. So we'll go ahead and do that here and uh, make sure you've got the right password in here and then when we click login it's going to redirect us to the page that we we're trying to access in this case it was the add uh, item page and now what we can do is we can uh, create an item so I can call this my uh, submitted item and then I can fill in the uh, item description and then we can submit this item and uh, by default you'll have this default system message that just says thank you for your submission and uh, at that point I'll also get an email uh, thanking me for submitting the item so once uh, once the item has been added uh, we can come back to our web app section and go to the customer submitted app and when you do that you're gonna see the item that I just submitted and it shows disabled here because when we were in the web apps setting section uh, we had this box which says requires approval checked and uh, so what happened was when I submitted the item it sent an email to uh, the people who are members of the administrators role saying someone has submitted an item you'll need to approve it so um, I'm and now if I were the admin I can come in here take a look at the item uh, review the contents of it make sure it's appropriate or it fits whatever uh, criteria I specify and then if I'm satisfied with that I can just click the enable box click update and that will essentially approve the item now you can also come down to this more options box and you can see that it was submitted by a guy named Eric Stubbs which is the name of the customer who I logged in as and uh, that's basically what designates the fact that I am the owner of this item 
So another thing you can do with customer submitted web app items is um, basically manually add the items from the admin area and assign them to a specific user. And uh, sometimes that's uh, that can be useful. You can also assign items to users when you're importing items. Uh, you'll basically have to specify the person's CRM ID or their entity ID is sometimes how it's referred to as part of your import sheet. And when it creates the item, it will assign it to that user. But if you're doing it from the admin area, you'll just need to create the item. We'll call it item two. And then when we, uh, you'll want to open up more options, come down here to the edit uh, pop-up window and you can type in the email address of the customer who you're wanting to uh, assign this to. Click the search button and it should show you the matching results. At that point you'll need to select the user and you can see that it populates uh, that person's name by this submitted by and at that point it basically assigns ownership of this item to that customer so that they will have the necessary access to edit and uh, delete it. So we'll just go ahead and save that. And so now we've got, uh, we basically have two items. They're both uh, they're both owned by one customer. I'm going to go ahead and add one more item that won't be owned by anyone, uh, just so you can see some of the effects of this on, um, on some of our list output here in a second. So we'll go ahead and create that one as well. So once uh, you have some customer submitted web app items, you're oftentimes going to want to output those on the page and you can output those using the standard uh, web app list item output tag. So we can go to web apps from our module manager and we could use the normal display list of web app items and it would just show all of the items in our database uh, regardless of who submitted the items. Um, oftentimes though you want to create say a page where a customer can view the items that they have submitted and uh, either edit or delete those. And in the, in that situation, you're going to want to use this module where it says display list of web app items submitted by a customer and it shows you they must be logged in here. So we're going to use uh, this module and then at this point we've got uh, we've got to select the web app we want to show a list of items from and then we've got the same display criteria options that we had in the normal list of items. So we'll just use the simple display all items one. Again we can choose whether or not to use the list or the list backup template. Uh, we'll just go ahead and use the regular old template and we're going to insert uh, that module and it looks very similar to the normal module instead, except instead of being just web apps it's web apps customer and this is going to show just a list of items uh, to the customer who is currently logged in so we'll save that page and uh, that's pretty much all you need to do for that so now if I were to come over to the my items page um, because I'm logged in, I can see the items I've submitted. There are actually three items in our item database, but I've only submitted two of them. And actually I submitted this one and then we manually created this one and then assigned it to me. But you can see it's still showing up as, uh, as if I am the owner. Um, now, if you want to provide the ability to, for your customers to edit or delete these items, you're going to have to customize your list template and include the edit and delete tags. So Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So we are, uh, we are in the settings for our customer submitted web app, the same settings you get to when you're first creating it. Um, but we're going to want to go to our layouts section so we can customize these list templates. Now, the default template just has the counter and the name. Um, we're going to add uh, two links here. Um, we'll just do edit and then we'll include the tag edit and then we will do delete and we will include the tag underscore delete and if you don't remember what those tags are you can also get to them 
they are on this list uh, somewhere and uh, you could just insert them using the tag insert list but it's easy enough to think about tag edit and tag delete and so if we save that and then we go back to our my items list page it's going to include these additional uh, edit and delete links for us and when you go to the edit screen it's uh, it's going to take that person to the items edit page where they could make changes and resubmit it and then when you click on the delete option it's going to say are you sure you want to they click OK and now the item has been deleted and then if we were to come back to this page because we deleted that one item they are only there now uh, one thing that you may be wondering about is uh, because we're using just our plain old list template and we've included these edit and delete tags in here what's going to happen if the user's not logged in so let's go back to our page on the site that actually has our uh, list out. So as you can see here, we're just on a page and this is just a list of all the items. Um, this would be a publicly accessible list. It's using the same list template that includes the edit uh, and delete links, but uh, because no one is actually logged into this page, I'm, st I'm not actually going to see the links that allow me to edit and delete. Now I see these edit and delete uh, markers here because I've hard-coded that into the template, um, but the actual output for the tag, even though it's on the list template, I'm not going to see anything because uh, no one is actually logged in here, and I'm not using the customer submission module you can see I'm just using the basic module web apps on my um, on my other page here I have a list of customer submitted web app items you can see it's slightly different module tag this is what we've been using I've also put a title on here and one of the neat things you can do when a customer is logged in is include a tag such as module first name and so if I were to uh, load this page up while I'm logged in it will uh, it'll actually output my my name there and uh, you can see it's using the same list template but this time it's going to include the edit and the delete links as well and uh, so you've got some flexibility there and also it's only showing me the item that I submitted as opposed to all of the items in the database so finally, when it comes to these edit and delete links, sometimes you want to provide a different UI than simply putting these tags uh, as part of your list view. And that can require some creativity in how you set up your, your HTML. But if you inspect element on these, you can take a look at the structure of the URL that it uses to create these. And for the edit link, it's basically just the permalink of the item, the regular old details link with this question mark A equals edit added to the end of it. So there are tags you can use to output the URL of the item and then you can just append in the question mark A equals edit and you can create a more controlled edit link. And a similar thing goes with the delete link as well. It's a slightly different format uh, but you, uh, you can certainly construct these links a little bit more manually as well. So there's three customization sections we're going to want to take a look at when it comes to customer submitted web app items. The first one is the autoresponder and you can get to this by going to the settings uh, for the customer submitted web app in this case and uh, going to the autoresponder tab over here. And this is going to be the email that is sent to the customer when they submit an item and uh, you simply want to include a uh, thank you message to them. You have a few different tags you can include to output their first and last name and customize that email to them. So this is really the thank you email. Uh, the next two are the system pages. So when you submit a web app item or when a customer submits one, they're going to be taken to a thank you page and you can customize that page by going to the uh, site manager and then system pages and then editing the content of the confirmation page. There's also a similar page for the delete page which is just the page that is shown uh, as a confirmation when the user deletes one of the items they've created.
Finally, when it comes to the workflows that get sent to your admin users when someone submits an item so they know to approve it, you can manage those from these uh, workflow email, uh, basically system emails that get sent out. And similar functionality to the autoresponder, you fill in uh, certain details and it will send those emails appropriately. And you can get to that by going to the site manager and then the system emails page.